Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about Cascadour. Now, this is an animation tool I've been a big fan of since it was first announced in early beta. It basically uses AI and machine learning to make an artist's life easier, not to replace them. It does a very good job of it, and basically this slots into your animation pipeline and makes a lot of the process just quite a bit simpler. We'll show you it in action in just a second, but the reason why we're talking about it today is because Cascadour 2024.1 was just announced at GDC. On top of that, they announced new pricing, and as well as a pretty generous giveaway. We'll get to the details of the new pricing in the giveaway in just a second. First, let's give you a quick, quick demonstration of what Cascadour is all about, and then we'll move on from there. So this here is Cascadour 2024.1, and let me just open up a demo file to showcase exactly what this guy is all about. Now I'm only showing you like the very surface level. There's a whole lot more going on behind the scenes. This guy's got uh, auto rigging capability. It's got uh, mocap cleanup or something new in 2020.4, uh, 2024.1. Uh, it's got uh, physics interpolation. It's got real world um, interactions. So you've got physical interactions with real world objects. Uh, but where I can really show you in action here, let's show this guy land so we got this final guy right here let me just move over on him like so and we've also got so let's go over here and we're going to switch to auto pose mode all right so uh, so you've got your traditional rigging so you can move with bones or control points or whatever but you've also got this auto pose and this is where the machine learning or ai kicks in i can grab a control point like this guy right here see and when i move it the rest of him acts accordingly all of the secondary animations and see as it gets to the ground it handles it plants the foot and then you get all of the secondary animations you would expect. So I can take this guy, so let's grab his hand. Again, I'll, I'll bring it down towards the ground. And so it's using machine learning to figure out what to do with the rest of the animation. So here, ground, and then flattened. And then see there, it's crawling along the ground and handling it accordingly. And see how it reinterpreted how you would best have your foot on the ground. You're gonna probably still have to do a little bit of cleanup. You're, you know, an animator still needs to make something look good. But a lot of the little things that you would normally have to deal with are being dealt with for you. And this is super impressive to me. I, I just, um, yeah, this has been a tool that me as a as a poor animator, this is the kind of thing that I like machine learning to do for me because it basically the drudge work. It, it's just taking care of all of that stuff for me. So here we are back at the website. It is cascadour.com, by the way. Uh, you can download it there for free. There is a completely functional free version. It works with FBX, Collada, and USD, so you can export it out to a variety of different pipelines to make it work. Uh, then you can see some of the features here. There are rigging tools in there, so you can bring in uh, one-click rigs from Daz, Character Creator, Mixamo, Unreal, MetaHuman, uh, and so on. Or you can quickly set them up by basically just dropping control points on your mesh. Uh, you can make any animation editable. So this is the new version 2024 thing uh, is you've got the ability to unbake animation is what they're calling it. So when you're dealing with mocap data, you're basically getting a keyframe for every bloody frame. So it makes a very precise result, but it makes it editing it an absolute nightmare. So what this is doing is actually going through and picking out the most important frames and then doing interpolation between them. So you're dealing with a couple of frames here. So you saw like there in the, the graph there, you're only dealing with say a frame every or a, a keyframe every five or six frames, for example, it makes it so that you can actually edit and work with the animation. So instead of all of those frames, see, so you got these individual keyframes, you can change it out, space it out accordingly. In a nutshell, it allows you to now actually edit keyframed information, keyframe um, motion capture data, uh, which is pretty nice. Again, we also have obviously the neural network uh, assisting with the auto posing. That's what we saw earlier on. It's also even got it controls for fingers in there as well. Uh, it does have the physics calculations, uh, and this is another area where they have uh, just updated it in this release. Um, is secondary motion support there, uh, so you can control it via a slider. Uh, you can actually even turn um, videos into animations, uh, so you can do video mocap with a single source video. A lot of uh, things out there that are offering this is now built into Cascadour as well, and copy and paste retargeting, uh, although I do believe this is a pro-only feature. And you can see here, using those universal formats, it integrates with just about every application out there. So that is the, uh, the, the overview of Cascador itself in 2024. So there is a new release. Uh, we covered most of the new features there. So there is animation uh, unbaking. That is the ability to, to work with keyframes. We got their, their video preview of it going on down here. We'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, they've got improve, improved physics and environmental interaction. I'll show you that in the video. It's a lot easier to understand at that point. Uh, an alpha version of animation retargeting and auto um, interpolation for smoother transitions and easier adaption of animations across different character rigs and enhancements to their auto posing. So you've got additional points and props for more posing, including finger auto posing, layout, customization. 
adjacent, etc. So let's go ahead and see the physics side of thing. Here we go. So here is the new physics interaction. So staircase, it can use physics calculations to, to deal with going up those steps. And then as you're gonna see in a second, wall jumping. Uh, so it, it can uh, incorporate these physical props into the real world uh, for calculating your simulations. And a lot of times if you're working with games, you're not gonna use this too much because you're gonna have this calculated in your game engine. But if you're working in like a cut scene or a film or something, definitely useful in that regard. And now we get to the pricing change. So they've changed it to indie free pro, sorry, free indie pro and team licenses. Uh, free was used to be limited by having um, a certain number of keyframe updates. So you could up to uh, like 120 frames update or something like that, export. Now there's no exporting out other than the CA-esque format. So free is basically gives you the ability to learn the tool and have functionality to, to most of the functionality of the tool. And you can save your projects and potentially send it to somebody else that has a license that could export it for you. But those are the big limitations of free. Free is mostly just for you to be able to get your hands on Cascador. And then now we have an indie version, which is $100 a year lev uh, revenue limited. We'll get to that in just a minute here. Uh, but this allows you to export out FBX, DAE, and USD. And then you get into Pro, which gives you more, t more features and functionality there. And then there is a Teams if you've got a larger size team. So that is the new licensing breakdown. Now, I did mention a giveaway off the top, and this is actually kind of cool. So if you right now are a basic Cascadeur basic user, you can get a free upgrade to the Indie license for two years, uh, which is you know 99 bucks a year. So basically you get a two years of free Indie as long as you had the free version before. Pretty generous action. All you gotta do, basically come into Cascadeur, go here to sync, uh, to basically claim Indie license, and then sync license, and you're done. I've already got my licensing set up, so it's not going to work for me, but that is the extent of what you need to do. Basically log into the account you used to check out Cascadeur before, and you will be upgraded for two years to an indie license, which is a pretty nice little gift. So we've got here the breakdown of their licensing. So you're going to look at this immediately and go, ah, oh, subscription software, that's BS. Don't worry. It's not actually that bad because it's perpetual licensing, which means it's basically the exact same thing as you buy your software. The only difference is instead of buying your, your software at a fixed price, you're buying a year of your software. And then once that year is up, if you stop um, paying for it, you, you can keep using that version frozen in time. So it's just like as if you bought uh, you know, a version one or version two of software in the past, whereas in Instead of upgrading each version, you can basically cancel it and then you could buy another year down the road if they added new features you want. So it's basically the exact same thing as owning your own software. It's just in a subscription mode. In some ways, this is a more generous offer than subscription. I like perpetual licensing. It's something that you really can't have an issue with in a lot of ways. So the big change here, free doesn't have that ability to export out a, a limited number of keyframes like it used to before. Um, so that is definitely a negative change. But the indie version you can get for free if you already had a free version. Now, do keep in mind the indie version is lim uh, limited on two levels teams of one to three people and revenue must be less than 100k per year so if you're over that threshold then you have to get pro pro gives you uh other options here so animation retargeting for humanoids interaction with the environment so if you want to have that um, wall jumping that kind of stuff that is a pro feature scene linking um so those are the big differences there uh so the the indie version does have that revenue limitation and then if you have a team of more than three people then you're getting into team space licensing and that's really i think the only difference between those two just do keep in mind um in theory if you've got a team of four to ten people working on on animations then you should be seeing probably their the, the value you and jump now it does get a little confusing is let's say you have one animator on a team but you've got 10 programmers do you have to get this version or this version because that would seem kind of crazy to me but i think this is only if you've got that many seats uh, so if you need to have 10 animation seats so even if you have a team of 10 people if they're not animators i think you're good to go but check the license for sure on that one uh before continuing on so that is the change and again you can get this indie if you're a free tier already you can get two years of indie uh completely free so basically just do the upgrade process i talked about earlier on and yeah that's it so ladies and gentlemen cascadure 2024.1 uh, new keyframe animation retargeting or animation unbaking as they're calling it um some new uh physics interaction tools etc but the biggest new change change here is the change in the pricing structure and that two-year giveaway upgrade option. Uh, so let me know what you think of Cascadura 2024.1. Are you already using it? Have you checked it out? And do you find that it works well in your pipeline? See, I'm not a good animator. I'm barely an animator at all. I just know the basics to demonstrate things. And this makes me a lot better. But I'm curious to hear if you're a good animator, is this still a really useful tool for you? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.